Hey folks, in this video we're going to talk about why the markets make sense now, why the 8th of November is super important and why I cannot wait, uh, and the setups I'm looking to do um, over the next couple of weeks, and also an M2 kicker. So let's do this. Okay, so yesterday or maybe one of the other days, I made a video where I, I, I was somewhat un, a little bit confused. Um, so in this video, yeah, it was literally yesterday, I said I was still bearish, blah, blah, blah. But I couldn't work out why some, like the indices were still rising. So if we have a look at this, a few days ago, the S&P 500 was rallying pretty strong. So too was the, the Dow Jones, the Jer 30. Most indices were just rallying. Um, and I couldn't understand that because when you look at the FANG TM stocks, so Facebook, Amazon, uh, Apple, Netflix, Google, Tesla, Microsoft, they are all dumping. So you can see most of them have gapped down. So quite recently, uh, Facebook is down now 31%. Amazon's down uh, about 18% from that recent gap down. Apple's down about 9%, Netflix is down 11%, Google is down 18%, whoa, more than that, still falling, 18.81%. Uh, Tesla, down about 10%, seems to be recovering slightly, so it's now about 9%. And Microsoft is, yeah, about 13%. And this is the lion's share of all um, stock volume in the US markets and so but thankfully um, Jerome Powell has put things right we did another 0.75% uh, rate hike and it's not just that he said that there is no inkling of a pivot to come anytime soon so the next one's most likely going to be a 0.5% rate hike blah 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 but what this means, as expected, with a rate hike, you have dollar strength. And when the dollar goes up, everything capitulates. So finally, things are now starting to go in the same direction as the FANG TM stocks, i.e. down. Um, so everything is dumping, which is great. Things make sense, finally. Um, so there was a bit of a lag there. And the, yeah, I, I think there's a fair bit more falling to come there. Now, also, when looking at Bitcoin, uh, if we get a, a longer time frame chart out. So everyone has done this to death a million times. I, I look at it every now and then. Um, but I, I try and see you know, how, how things are going with the cycles. Now, we can, I mean, I'm not going to talk about cycles. That's a long um, thing. And I'm also going to go into fractals and a lot more in depth at the cuddle. Um, so it's, yeah, therealistictrader.com forward slash cuddle. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but going back to the cycles they 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 still are in play folks you tend to have a halving a boom um typically a boom for a year crash for a year um and accumulation for a year and a bit and nothing has really changed i mean the current market that we're seeing right now is very similar to the uh, the cycle we had in 2013 14 um and the key thing i want to share with you here is that um, one, yeah, the, so the, the percentage growth is always going to be diminishing as Bitcoin becomes a, a much bigger asset. Uh, the timings will be the same because it's every four years, but also the crashes will start to d diminish in depth as well. So the first um, proper crash, we had 86% crash, then 83% crash, and I still don't believe we've had the lows. I know loads of people calling that 17,500-ish one the, the low. I, I still think it's a lot uh, further lower, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think it was probably 78 to 80% crash, probably. So if I just play with this one here. So if it, even if it's a 78% crash, it brings us to about 14, 15. But yeah, if we're, we're looking between 12 and 15, I, I reckon. Um, and also the, the time frame. So looking at the times, the, the crash period is always, this one was 406 days, this was 364 days, and so far if we look at it to, oh dear, let's move that one out of the way, to, to right now, it's about 350 days. Sort of makes sense, but this plots the absolute low. Now when you're plotting the absolute low, I'm pretty sure it's not this one here, it's just, I mean, that's 210 days, 
And I, yeah, I just don't see that happening. I think most likely we've got probably sometime in November, um, the absolute low, probably 78, 80%, probably something like here. And then we're gonna start the accumulation phase. Uh, the other thing is that with the accumulation phase, you never see an all-time high in that phase. It's, you know, unfortunately, you tend to wait to the next halving at least. Um, and it's always sub, it's close to the highs, but it's never quite there. So I think probably looking around 40K, if that comes true, I think the only thing that will change that is if we have a full-on Fed pivot and they start turning on the tap for you know, QE again, and or um, Bitcoin and, ETF and Ether spot ETFs are approved because we literally have trillions of dollars just sat on the sidelines waiting to come in, but then we need more regulation. So we need more regulation um, because that's going to boom our bags. Um, so that's that. But the thing I really wanted to, to talk about on this chart are the US midterms. So the midterms are every four years, as you know, um, and they're always early November. So it's the, it was a, I forgot what it was. I think it was a 15, 14th of November in this one in 2014, then the 6th of November in 2018, and it's the 8th of November. As I said, what, 8th is important uh, this year. And what happens is you tend to, so when we're looking at Bitcoin, you tend to have a little pump on the on the midterm election, uh, pre-midterm. So here, if I was to write down sort of uh, around here, this is the weekly chart, don't forget. You have the midterm pump. Um, so again, if you were to just simply draw some stuff, you have, um, I'll get my pen out, it's probably a lot easier. So pre-midterms, you have the dump, so one, you have the recovery, two, oh dear Lord, come on, to draw, damn it. Um, the slight recovery, oh dear, no, this is not going to work. I am going to have to get my little doodle pad out. One second, I'm just going to draw the midterm arrow in first before I take some screenshots. Um, six, so it's that week. In fact, I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once I've sorted my shit out. Right, back in the room. So here we have 2014, 2018, and where we are now, 2022, in terms of these bear markets. Now, again, at the cuddle, at the, that event I was talking about, I'll be going to fractals a lot more in depth. Um, but what you're basically looking at here in 2014, you have, so pre-midterm elections, you have pivot low over here, recovery, 0.2, move down to 0.3, and then the pump, so the midterm pump just before the midterm elections, four, and then you have, wee five, okay? So that's 2014. 2018, you have the same thing. You have... Now, it's a little bit different with this one, um, but it, whether it's, um, yeah, you have pivot low here, two, three, four, yeah. See, I always put fractals sort of in the, in the magic tea leaves part of TA, because it's all about the labeling. But either way, I still think, oh, sorry, no, I've, I've messed this up. It's the other way around. I think, actually, it's this one one two three and then you have the rally up just before the midterms and i think in 2018 it was a bit of an oddity because it actually stalled a little bit but the midterms are there we didn't get too much of a of a pump up um i think it was from six thousand dollars here up to about a max of about seven thousand six thousand seven hundred so it wasn't much but move five was all the way down there and then again, this year, I think, it's, as I said, it's much more like 2014. It's, it's a lot clearer. We've got one, two, move down three. We've got the four, which is the pump up to the midterms. And we've got, I think, four days left. So if we look at this, I reckon we've got today and tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday. So we've really got four days of potential rallying, if there is going to be any more rallying. Um, and then from the eighth onwards, game over. Some all-time low... Uh, cycle low sometime in November in my opinion so and then we five and when we have that we that's when you need to load up your bags so yeah still very bearish but I'm getting bullish closer uh, by the minute so 
that's something to be aware of. What else were we talking about? 8th of November, set up some looking for. Yeah, so if we have a look at, um, I mean, I've got some trades on at the moment, um, just a few little ones. So AVAX, I'm shorting, Axie, I'm shorting, and Phantom, I'm shorting. So if we have a look at some of them, so AVAX, get out of log. And let's look at the f the daily. Oopsie, the daily. Sorry, four hour chart. Yeah, I think basically across the board we've got sort of head and shoulders forming over here. Um, and yeah, I, I, I th yeah, I've just got some little shorts on. Um, so that's AVAX, Axie. I th it's just uh, yeah, this is a lovely trade. I, I quite like this one. Base support breached, a uh, nice little high test there just before it broke. We had a Kobo, so kissing off before buggering off, and a lovely high test there as well. So even if I'm, I'm stopped out, these are relatively small trades, I'm not too fast. And then I will always fade anything. Anything that spikes ridiculously like this, I'll fade it. So currently fading Phantom. Uh, but in terms of Bitcoin, I actually am more bearish from Bitcoin than Ether at the moment. So. Um, a text out into the community the other day, the other day, I think it was last night, yeah, I see a head and shoulders coming on ETH, aim to short on the right shoulder, um, and also GMX is, yeah, I'll talk about GMX as well, so, yeah, so here, here basically, we've got potentially four days of booming, well, I'm not saying it will boom, but if it is going to boom, it's going to be over the next four working days, so, aiming to short ether if it makes its way up here would be quite nice and I think a high prob target down here uh, high probability short term target is down here into this sort of territory I think that's quite likely um, let's quickly go into GMX before we go into Bitcoin etc yeah so GMX um, we I'm gonna get rid of some of these but basically we have base support breach um, across the board but what we're seeing here yeah I think there's there's still at least a little move down to sort of $40 which well, actually we're, that's where we are right now um, but we have a massive high test here yeah I've sort of I'm Actually, underside, uh, yeah, 36 is what I said the other day or yesterday. I do see a bit of a if we can get past this confluence of support, I think, yeah, 36 is a firm shout. But let's go back to Bitcoin, oh, sorry, and also quant whilst we're here. It's something I keep talking about. So, I posted um, this base support breach numerous times on Twitter, so numerous. There's there's many times I post about quant. Um, it's been quite bit, been a bit busy on here, but um, it is down here somewhere. If you if you scroll far enough, you'll see all my my quant uh, posts. But the yeah, we had a base support breach, and it's just been meandering its way down. It's actually creating potentially a, a falling compression in a, in a rising market. So we could get to sort of the uh, the crux point here and start maybe having a bit of a breakout. So getting to about 150, 155 I think is probably a high prob probability target for quant and then potentially to load up again. Um, but Bitcoin, so one thing I've been talking about in my trading pubs that I do um, is is that Bitcoin's in, in trouble because when you look at the um, the difficulty rates of Bitcoin, so where's Glassnode gone? Glassnode, and whilst we're there, let's look at check on chain. So if you go down to the miners on here, then scroll down to difficulty. So difficulty has been rising massively, um, therefore, it's harder for miners to. Um, to, yeah, to mine Bitcoin basically and if you're not sure have a little look at the capitulation video I did a while back so 
if you go back six days ago, I made Sorry, a Bitcoin no, mining capitulation just, just on, on that. I suppose it's just uh, video. So watch that. But basically, what's happening is that difficulty is still going up. Hash rate is still rising. Where's the miner shizzle? Miner shizzle. Miner, miner, miner. Here we go. Hash rate is still, still climbing. But now the price is starting to wobble. The price is starting to come back down. So this is not good for miners. Some big, big, big miners are are defaulting at the moment. And when you look at net outflows, miner net flows, look, we have loads of miners having to spend their Bitcoin and it's spiking as of literally the last couple of days. Um, therefore, Bitcoin capitulation spike is quite likely. Therefore, in terms of short term move, very short term, I'm looking at sort of a move down to at least the 19k level. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll be shorting it as it sort of makes its way up here over the next sort of four days or so, just phasing in slowly. But ultimately, like I mentioned, um, a bit more bearish on Bitcoin than Ether because Ether's proof of stake, it doesn't have all this capitulation type stuff. I think evidently if this starts dumping, Ether will then st dump with it. But I just, yeah, I'm, I want to short Bitcoin at the moment. Um, so for all you people that think you can fade me, go for it, fade me, <laughs> do what you want, I don't care. Um, but I am going to be shorting stuff for the mean time. Um, and then M2 kicker, yes, I think this is quite important. So I did this a while back, made this little picture. Oof, I've got a bit. Uh... So the the key thing I need to stress here is that every single cycle that Bitcoin has ever been in has been in a monetary expansion, ex, an expansionary cycle um, environment as in the currency supply has always been growing. In fact, the US currency supply has never stopped growing. It's never, ever, ever declined until, whoopsie, QT happens and U2, uh, U2? M2, US M2 is now declining for the first time. So we've never seen this. So I think to be bullish right now, I, I think it's quite reckless. I think it's um, quite naive to be super, super bullish on crypto right now. Um, like we've never seen this before and they've, the Fed has shown their hand they are going to continue hiking rates therefore stuff is going to keep on falling and if stocks keep on falling guess what crypto is going to keep on falling um, I think that and, and there's a very high correlation between crypto and um, at least 85% correlation between stocks and crypto and we've got a lot more further falling to come so yeah, I I would be very very careful. Um, being long. So last but not least, this is the last public event I'll be holding uh, for a year. So I'm I'm only gonna be doing one big big mega events a year now, uh, instead of every three months, just because it costs a fortune. It costs about thirty forty grand to hold each one of these events, and I don't sell anything. Um, so yeah the 15 days time so 19th of november book on um, it's literally a full day of talking of con pure content zero selling a uh, hot hot dinner hot lunch teas and coffees throughout the day and then a party with loads of booze and fun and games and stuff like that and that literally just covers the day delegate rate from the hotel really um so yeah we've got loads of fun and games i'll always be throwing big old teddy bears around and um, we're going to be talking about NFTs, but properly, uh, people still don't understand NFTs and the ramifications of it all. I'll be talking about CBDCs and why you should be shitting your pants about CBDCs. Um, what else? Uh, there's a very interesting country with loads of lessons and learning points. So that's going into the macroeconomic stuff. And then we'll be talking a lot about fractals and crypto in general. So it's going to be really, really fun. Um, I think that's it. Still, Jesus, 22 minutes. I better stop talking. Bye.